In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you step by step how to create this really nice procedural anime style glass material for EV. It's very easy to make and as it's procedural, you can easily create different variations of glass. We are going to use the Node Wrangler add-on in this tutorial. So if you don't have it enabled, just go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, search for Node, and enable the Node Wrangler add-on. I'll use these different objects to preview the material so we can see how the glass looks across different shapes. I'll select one of the objects and in the shader editor view, I'll click here to add a new material. Rename it to Anime Glass and then select the objects that will share the same material. Make sure to select the object that has the material last so it becomes the active one. Now press Ctrl L and choose Link Materials. This way we assign the same material to the other objects as well. I also have these lights in my scene so we can see the reflections on our material. In the Render Properties tab, make sure the render engine is set to EV. And go to the Render View mode so we can preview the material. Now press Numpad 0 to go to the camera view. By the way, if you want to dive deeper into EV, I highly recommend checking out Blender Guru's tutorial how to use Eevee. He explains the theory behind how Eevee works, he shows how to create a really nice lighting setup, how to fix some reflection problems and many other things that are useful if you use Eevee. So I'll leave the link in the description if you want to check it out. After you finish this video, of course, please. Ok, let me disable gizmos and overlays to make our scene a bit clearer. And before I start creating the material, I'm gonna add line art to my scene. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I like the way it looks, so I'm gonna do it real quick. So I'm gonna select the scene collection, press shift A, go to grease pencil, then click on scene line art. Now we'll go to the modifier properties tab. In here we've got this line art modifier and we can tweak a few settings to make it look better. So I'm gonna lower the line thickness all the way down to 1. I'm also going to expand edge types and I'm gonna enable material borders. So we also get line art from borders between materials. And I think it looks okay for now. I don't wanna to focus too much on the line art because it's not the purpose of this video. So now let's begin working on the material. So the first aspect of the material we'll be working on is the reflections. We don't need the principal BSDF, so let's delete it. And to get some nice reflections, we're gonna bring in a glossy BSDF node. We are also gonna need a shader to RGB node. The shader to RGB node is typically used to apply additional effects on the output of shaders. It converts shade information into pure RGB color data, and you can use the result in a color ramp, for example, or any other color based operation. So the BSDF goes into the shader input. And we also need a color ramp node so we can work on this color to give it a cartoon style look. The color goes into the factor. Control shift and left click to preview the result. I'm gonna switch the interpolation of the color ramp node over to constant so we get a solid color between the color stops. And this is the main trick to give our material a toon style look. I'm gonna click here to add a new color stop. And I'm going to change the color to a dark gray. Now we can use the sliders to adjust the amount of each level of reflection. I recommend that you move the camera around to see how it looks from different angles. I'll also switch the light scattering distribution over to GGX. This setting controls how the reflection looks on the surface. And I think that in this case, GGX looks a bit better. I'm gonna increase the roughness a bit as well. And I'm gonna set the color to completely white. Yeah, this is starting to look a bit better. Okay, so to create a glass material, you might be tempted to use the glass BSDF node, but the glass BSDF doesn't work really well in Eevee. So what I'm gonna do instead is add a diffuse BSDF and a transparent BSDF, and I'm gonna mix them with a mix shader node. 
To do this more easily, let's use the lazy mix shortcut of the Node Wrangler add-on. So I'm gonna hold down Ctrl and Shift and use the right mouse button to connect the two nodes I wanna mix. And the mix shader node is automatically added. Now I'll plug the reflections that we've just created into the color of the diffuse BSDF. Now I can use the factor of the mix shader to get more of the transparent or of the diffuse BSDF. The lower the value, the more influence the transparent BSDF has, and the higher the value, the more influence the diffuse BSDF has. I'll set it to 0.14, I think it looks nice this way. Now I want to add a bit of emission to the reflections, so I'm going to bring in an emission shader, and I'm going to drop it here. And again we need a shader to RGB node to connect the emission into the diffuse BSDF color. So the emission goes into the shader to RGB node, and this color value goes into the color of the diffuse BSDF. And I'm going to set the strength of the emission to 3. And it doesn't look really good. Let me see. Mm. I think I'll darken the gray of this color ramp. Yeah, I think it looks a little bit better. Okay, so before we continue creating the shader, we can see that there's some noise on the objects. And this is because of the new version of EV. And to fix that, we could go to the Render Properties tab, and under Sampling, just increase the samples. But this would increase the render time. And as we're going for an anime style kind of thing, this isn't really necessary. So instead, I'm gonna go to the Material Properties tab, Settings, and under Surface, switch the render method over to blended. The difference between blended and dithered is that dithered supports ray tracing and blended doesn't. But in our case, blended is just fine. Another thing that I want to change here is these two layers of reflections we are getting. It seems like the reflection is duplicated. This happens because you can see the reflections on the mesh that is facing the camera. And as the material is transparent, we can also see the back face's reflections. To fix that, we just need to enable back face culling for the camera. We can also disable this option, as we don't have any light probe in our scene. And now I think I'll increase the factor of this mix shader, because the glass got too transparent. Yeah, I think 0.2 looks just fine. Now let's create a glass rim. To do this, we'll need a Fresnel and a color ramp node. Connect the Fresnel to the color ramp, Ctrl, Shift and left click to preview the result. Now switch the interpolation of the color ramp over to constant and drag the white slider closer to the black one. Now I'm gonna use the IOR value to control the thickness of the rim. I think I'm gonna move the white slider a little closer to the black one. And I'm gonna set the IOR value to 1.01. .01. Yeah, I think it looks alright. Now we need to mix the rim with the other reflections. To do this, let's use the lazy mix shortcut again. So hold down Ctrl and Shift and use the right mouse button to connect the color rim with the shader to RGB node. And a mix color node is automatically added. Connect the result into the color of the diffuse BSDF node. And let's see the result. OK, we need to switch the blending mode over to lighten and increase the factor all the way up to 1. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. And this is the main setup of this glass shader. But if you want to go even further, you can add some noise to the rim and to the reflections to make it look like there are imperfections on the surface of the glass. So let's bring in a noise texture. And to connect the noise texture into the Fresnel node, we're gonna need a bump node. The color of the noise texture goes into the height of the bump node, and the normal of the bump node goes into the normal of the Fresnel node. Now I'm gonna reduce the bumpness strength quite a bit, because I want the imperfections of the glass to be really subtle. I'm also gonna decrease the scale of the noise texture.
You can play around with these values until you achieve the look that you want. Alright, I think you can do the same thing with the reflections. So let's select these two nodes, press Shift and D to duplicate them. And the normal of the bump node goes into the normal of the glossy BSDF. This noisy effect is just to create some imperfections on the glass. I think it looks better this way, but it's just a personal preference and I use it depending on the scene and on my objects. You can also switch the dimensions of the noise texture over to 4D, so we get this W value that we can use as a seed for the noise pattern. I know it's an anime style, but I think it looks more believable with these tiny imperfections. The material is pretty much it. Now let's create a node group for this shader, so it'll be easier to use and customize the material in the future. So I'm gonna select all nodes except material output. So all nodes but this one. And I'm gonna press Ctrl and G to create the node group. Now I just need to choose the inputs of the material that I wanna add to the node group and we'll be able to use these inputs to customize our material. I'm gonna drag the group input node closer to these ones right here so it'll be easier to add the inputs to it. So let's add this mix shader factor. There is the value that controls how transparent the glass will be. Now the transparent BSDF color to define the color of the glass. Let's see what else we can add. The emission strength as well. We're gonna need it to add a bloom effect to the glass. What else? The glossy BSDF color and roughness. We can use them to customize the reflections. The bump node strength, of course, to control the reflection noise. This W value that is a seed for the noise pattern. The noise scale is also important. Now the rim nodes. With the IOR value of the Fresnel node, we can adjust the thickness of the rim. So let's add it as well. Let's add the bump node strength. Switch the dimensions of the noise texture over to 4D. So we have the noise seed. And also the noise scale. And you can add any other inputs that you think will be useful to customize our material in the future. You can also rename the group node and the labels of the inputs. Just press N to bring out this menu. Go to the group tab. Let's rename the node group. I'm gonna call it Anime Glass. Now in the group socket section, double click on the label to rename it. This one is the transparent and diffuse factor. This is the glass color. The emission strength. I'm not gonna rename all the inputs right now, but I think you got the idea. Now I'm gonna press the tab key so we can see our node group. All right, we have all the inputs here and we can use them to customize the glass. So let me change the wine bottle, for example. I'm gonna click here to create a new material duplicating the current one. So we'll be able to change the wine bottle without affecting the other objects. And now I'm gonna change the color of the glass. So it looks a bit more like a wine bottle. There we go, it looks much better this way. Finally, I want to show how to add a bloom effect to the renders to make the reflections really stand out. So go to the Compositing tab, enable Use Nodes. I'm going to switch this panel here over to the 3D viewport so we can see our scene. Press Numpad 0 to go to the camera view. Select Rendered View. Click on this drop down and set the compositor to camera or always. I'm gonna set it to camera because I wanna see the compositing result only in the camera view. Now in the compositor, I'm gonna add in a glare node and drop it here in the middle. Switch the glare type over to fog glow. And we can already see the bloom effect coming from the reflections. 
I'm going to increase the emission strength to make the effect more visible. If you don't want to use the line art, here's how your scene will look like. And that's it. If you enjoyed this video, I think you're gonna like this one as well on how to create a procedural energy ball. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.